Well, you'd hope so. You'd hope so. I mean, obviously, Paul's got the he's got a very good job there in, in Shea Camdam's job now. You know, so he's going to be he's he's going to find a few good opportunities to ride good horses. So I mean, obviously, hopefully. You've known him for years. You've grown. I've not. Listen, I'm, I've, I've been Richard's tenure. I've been working with Paul for, since I, since I got there. You know, I mean, he was in Dubai the winter when I went actually went to Richard's and then. It's come from there since he come back, and obviously I've, I've known Rich, I've known Paul since I started riding. He's here, so I came through apprentice with him, you know, and we've known each other all the time. It's same like the Northern Wayne Room. It's we we all know each other. We all need to know each other well, and and you're not surprised by his progress? No, not at all. Not one bit. He's always been a good rider. I interviewed Jim McGrath in December, and he, he said something interesting to me. Um, I, can't I won't use the exa- I can't remember the exact phrase, but. Basically, said that most jockeys, the majority of jockeys, are, are paupers. You know, they're, they're, it's a hard living, obviously, but they're not rich. No, they're not. No, you know, like other sportsmen or whatever. No, it's not. No, but as I say, you just all you got to do, you just got to get your head down and just keep batting away. Sorry. Why? 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 Do you do it? Why? I suppose just the love of the game. I suppose. I mean, it's it's something I've wanted to do since I was younger. I rode ponies when I was younger. Went to Chris Grant, started riding that when I was 12, and obviously got the bug and just kept kept going from there, you know. But you're not a jockey like yourself, Tony, you're not motivated by money or winnings or...? No, 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 I just, I just, I just love racing and love doing what I do. Love going to work in the morning, riding out, and obviously just, just, just love going racing. Two thousand ten, the injury. Tell me about it. Well, Do you remember it? it? Oh yeah, I remember it well. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a bad injury, but you just got to get over it. You know, I mean, I was. I was Did you know at the time it was a bad injury? I thought it brought me back. I thought it brought me back. Yeah. Um, it was. It was. It was a bad. It was a well. It was a bad day. I was sort of. I wasn't even meant to be there on the day. I was meant to be at Redcar. I had seven rides at Redcar, and Paul was meant to be doing Haydock during the day and then flying up to on the night. And cut a long story short, Paul was injured. Paul Paul wasn't very well, so Richard says to me, "Will you go and do the two meetings?" So I went to I went to Haydock. Thankfully, rode a winner. Then flew up to Air, and I had me fall. So it was it was a it was a bad fall. Spectators like me see it happen. What's it feel like? You, you're lying there, you know. Well, to be fair, what it was, it was good in the stalls, and yeah. just I mean, it was just totally out of the blue. I mean. The horse had never done anything like that before. He'd never done anything. He's, he was always he was a quiet horse. Just I don't know what happened. Something must have spooked him or something. Just as we were walking in the stalls, he, he sort of reared over and I sort of tried to jump out the way. But as I tried to jump out the way, he came back and landed on me. And I brought my pelvis in five places. I mean, I couldn't feel my legs at the time and I thought I'd brought me back. But so you're laying there thinking, I broke me back? Yeah, I thought I brought me back. That's and it, just brace it over with. You've got time to think that. No, I don't, I don't know. I'm no, I was just in, I was in that much pain. Yeah. I, I was I was sort of I had three days I went, and the three days I was in pain. I've never felt pain like it. But it's but you're back. You recuperate. How long was the recuperation? Um, I was sort of off six months. Something like that. This is this is be six months before you can even sit in the house. I was I had open fractures still on me. I brought my pelvis in five places and I still had open fracture on the left hand side. So I was on crutches for two months and then came back and I was sort of riding back out in January, February time. So it was no a... thought of not going back? No, 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 not at all, no. So you get falls all the time and you just got to push yourself down and keep going. <laughs> this season then, what, what are your hopes for this season? Well, basically, don't get injured <laughs> for, the first, for the first day anyway. And then just obviously, just get, listen, get, I'm, I'm, I'm a realist, you know, just ride as many winners as I can. and. As long as I beat last year's, I'll be, I'll be happy, you know. But as I say, I, I really, I want. Yeah, we want to just ride as many as you can and see, see how we go, you know. You still, I mean, again, I'm never going to know the thrill coming past the post first. I mean, does it still? Does oh, it yeah, of course it does. Well, I mean, listen, if you go and ride out and you're riding bad horses all the time, then it's you're not, you're not, it's, it's not, it's not a good, good feeling, you know. You've got to be getting good rides. You've got to be riding winners, or you wouldn't do it. So, I mean, the thrill's definitely still there. How's it feel? I mean, I don't know, I'm never going to know. No, I mean, listen, I mean, it's, it's better on the bigger days, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Places like here, York, and, you know, and stuff. Yeah. The, obviously, the, 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 the obviously big, massive crowd, and 
stuff there. They do obviously mean a lot more, yeah. yeah but they say, no, it's, a, it's a great feeling. And do you have a favourite course personally to ride? Well, you might laugh because well, it's only because it's half an hour up the road. It's obviously York, but no, it's it's just a lovely course to ride. It's it's a fair track. You could sort of ride. You could you can sit handy. You can drop in. You can do what you want. And nine times out of ten, the best horse will win. Your boss, if I can refer to him that way, Richard Farr. He's not a fan of all weather, particularly. No. no. What about you? He's not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> he's not the only one. Um, no, as I say, listen, it, it's there, it does a purpose. I mean, basically, I'm not, I wouldn't be a big lover of it myself, but you've, you've, there's horses there to be ridden, someone's got to ride them, so you just get on and do it. So you're a turf man, first of all? Well, yeah, that's, that's why I like, that's why I like everyone. Everyone's got their own preferences, but that's definitely what I like anyway. And he said to me that if he had the last 200 quid in his pocket, he'd put it on a horse you were riding. Right. Um, as a punter myself, I would probably put the last 200 quid on a, on a horse trained by Richard Farley. Um, what his strengths? What why him? Richard, I mean, listen, he's, he, he can't, you can't knock his statistics, you know, he's, he's last five years, over 100 winners. He was 161 winners last year. Listen, he, 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 does, he does it every year. He's, you can't knock the statistics. I mean, he, he has his horses fit, the well, the look well. And to be fair, he's easy to ride for. Why? Basically, just I suppose the love of it, love of the game, coming racing. It's a brilliant day out. It's a brilliant day out for everyone, you know. I mean, it's just the the sheer, the sheer atmosphere at, at the race of course, you know. I mean, obviously, when you come here, there'll be thirty or forty thousand people here, and. You see you as a jockey, you're a jockey, you, you get off hopefully in the winner's enclosure, you come down from the horse and the owners are there. Do most owners know jack shit about racing? I mean, do they know what, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I'm asking, do they, do they know what they're talking about or they're just happy to... Nine times out of ten, they, 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 don't, they wouldn't really understand that much, you know, so you've, you've got to try and come across in a way that... To, to let them know what the, like what, what I say, I mean, sometimes we'll have little different lingers and stuff of, yes, uh, you know, you, yes. you know what I'm saying, yeah, and and they won't have a clue what we're talking no, about sometimes. So you've got to try and explain explain yourself to them as well, you know, yeah. in a way that they'd understand. There must be horses you go out on that you know are never going to win a race. Well, yeah, obviously, obviously there is, but as I say this new. But the owners think just maybe. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, let's say there's. I mean, listen. I, I worked Michael Dickinson there for ten years ago, twelve years ago. In, I was in America there for three months for him. He says to me, "Never say a horse is useless till it's been dead ten years." <laughs> so that's what I always say. <laughs> uh, so. Fair enough. All right. Thank you for your time. No problem. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much.